Hello, forever friends and family. I would like to welcome you to webinar number three, Think and Grow Rich. I just would like to start forward just a few sentences, then we will continue. The book is written by Napoleon Hill. He spent over 20 years to collect information from the richest people on the beginning of the previous century. Here's a forward of the, his book. What do you want most? Is it money, fame, power, contentment, personality, peace of mind, happiness? The 13 steps to riches described in this book offers the shortest dependable philosophy of individuals' achievements ever presented for the benefit of the man or woman who is searching for a definite goal in life. We continue to read from a chapter we stopped last time, and I would like to, oops, hold on, please. I would like to ask, continue to read my friend and partner, supervisor from Brooklyn, Isaac Gilbinovich. Hold on for a second, and we will continue in a minute. Let's continue to read Isaac from this part of the book. Good evening, everybody. Desire, the starting point of all achievement, the first step toward the riches. When Edwin C. Barnes climbed down from the freight train in, in Orange, New Jersey, more than 30 years ago, he may have resembled a tramp, but his thoughts were those of a king. As he made his way from the railroad track to Thomas A. Edison's office, his mind was at work. He saw himself standing in Edison's presence. He heard himself asking Mr. Edison for an opportunity to carry out the one consuming obsession of his life, a burning desire to become the business associate of the great inventor. Barnes' desire was not a hope. It was not a wish. It was a keen, pulsating desire, which transcended everything else. It was definite. The desire was not new when he approached Edison. It had been Barnes' dom dominated desire. Can you go back? Dominated desire for a long time. In the beginning, when the desire first appeared in his mind, it, it may have been probably was only a wish, but it was no mere wish when he appeared before Edison with it. A few years later, Edwin C. Barnes again stood before Edison in the same office where he first met the inventor. This time, his desire has been translated, translated into reality. He was in business with Edison. The dominating dream of his life had become a reality. Today, people who know Barnes envy him because of the break life yielded him. They see him in the days of his triumph without taking the trouble to investigate the cause of his success. Barnes succeeded because he closed a definite goal. He chose a definite goal, placed all his energy, all his willpower, all his effort, everything back of, of that goal. He did not become the partner of Edison in the day he arrived. He was content to start in the most mean, manual job work as long as it provided an opportunity to take even one step toward his cherished goal. Five years passed before the chance he had been seeking made its appearance. 
during all those years, not one ray of hope, not one promise of uh, attainment of his desire has been held out to him. To everyone except himself, he appeared only another card in the Edison business wheel. But in his own mind, he was the partner of Edison every minute of the time from the very day that he first went to work there. It is a remarkable illustration of the power of a definite of a definite desire. Barnes won his goal because he wanted to be a business associate of Mr. Edison more than he wanted anything else. He created a plan by which to attain that purpose, but he burned all bridges behind him. He stood by his desire until it became the dominating obsession of his life. And finally, a fact. When he went to Orange, he did not say to himself, I will try to in induce Edison to give me a job of some sort. He said, I will see Edison and put him on notice that I have come to go into business with him. He did not say, I will work there for a few months, and if I get no encouragement, I will quit and get a job somewhere else. He did say, I will start anywhere. I will do anything Edison tells me to do, but before I'm through, I will be his associate. He did not say, I will keep my eyes open for another opportunity in case I fail to get what I want in the Edison organization. He said, there is but one thing in this world that I am determined to have, and that is a business association with Thomas A. Edison. I will burn all bridges behind me and stake my entire future on my ability to get what I want. He left himself no possible way of retreat. He had to win or perish. That is all there is to the barn story of success. A long while ago, a great warrior faced a situation which made it necessary for him to make a decision which ensured his success on the battlefield. He was about to send his armies against a powerful foe whose men outnumbered his own. He loaded his soldiers into boats, sailed to the enemy's country on unloaded soldiers and equipped them, gave the order to burn the ships that had carried them. Addressing his men before the first battle, he said, you see the boats going up in smoke. That means that we cannot leave this shore alive unless we win. We now have no choice. We win or we perish. Day one. Every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of, of retreat. Only by so doing can one be sure of maintaining that state of mind known as a burning desire to win, essential to success. The morning after the great Chicago fire, a group of mer merchants stood on State Street looking at the smoking remains of what had been their stores. They went into conference to, de to decide if they would try to rebuild or leave Chicago and start over in a more promising section of the country. They reached a decision, all except one, to leave Chicago. The merchant who decided to stay and rebuild pointed a finger at the remains of his store and said, Gentlemen, that very spot I will build the world's greatest store, no matter how many times it may burn down. That was more than 50 years ago. The store was built. It stands there today, a towering monument to the power of that state of mind known as a burning desire. The easy thing for Marshall Field to have done would have been exactly what his fellow merchants did. When the going was hard and the future looked di uh, dis dismal, they pulled up and went where the, go where the going seemed easier. Mark well this difference between Marshall Field and the other merchants, because it is the same dif difference which dis distinguished 
Edwin C. Barnes from thousands of other young men who have worked in the Edison organization. It is the same difference which distinguished practically all who succeed from those who fail. Every human being who reaches the age of undertaking of the purpose of money wishes for it. Wishing will not bring riches, but desiring riches which with a state of mind that becomes an obsession than putting definite then putting definite ways and means I'm sorry I think the planning definite not putting then planning then definite. planning definite ways and means to acquire riches and backing those plans with persistence which does not recognize failure will bring riches the merit by which desire for riches can be transmuted into its financial equivalent consists of six definite practical steps. Ways. First, fix in your mind the exact amount of money you desire. It is not sufficient merely to say, I want plenty of money. Be definite as to the amount. There is a philosophical reason for definiteness which will be described in a subsequent chapter. Second, determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. There is no such reality as something for nothing. Third, establish a definite date when you intend to possess the money you desire. Fourth, create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you are ready or not, to put this plan into action. Fifth, write out a clear, concise statement of the amount of money you intend to acquire, name the time limit for its acquisition, state what you intend to give in return for money, and describe clearly the plan, the plan through which you intend to acquire it. Sixth, Read your written statement aloud twice a day, once just before retiring at night and once after arising in the morning. As you read, see and feel and, and believe yourself already in possession of the money. It is important that you follow the instructions described in these six steps. It is especially important that you observe and follow the instructions in the six paragraphs. You may complain that it is impossible for you to see yourself in possession of money before you actually have it. Here is where a burning desire will come to your aid. If you truly desire money so keenly that your desire is an obsession, you will have no difficulty in convincing yourself that you will acquire it. The object is to want money and to become so determined to have it that you convince yourself you will have it. Only those who become money conscious ever accumulate great riches. Money consciousness means that the mind has become so thoroughly saturated with a desire for money that no one can see oneself already in possession of it. To the unintended who has not been schooled in the working principle of the human mind, these instructions may appear impractical. It may be helpful to all who fail to recognize the soundness of the six steps to know that the information they convey was received from Andrew Carnegie, who began as an ordinary laborer in the steel mills but managed, this, uh, despite his humble beginning, to make these principles yield him a fortune of considerably more than $100 million. Excuse me, Isaac. Thank you for your reading. Please take a break. I would like to continue to read just in a, in a second or minute. Iris Christopher, friend and partner, the most reliable manager from New Jersey. Before we continue to read, Iris, how done everybody for a second. I want to 
share something with you, two pages back down. Uh, next time I will show you with, I will share with all of you my personal proof how these six steps was done by us in 2004. And we did not know, we, we didn't know about these six steps from this book, from Think and Grow Rich. I have some proof, which is signed and prove it to share with you in back in 2004, August 2004. And I will share with you our personal story with forever. Okay, let's continue to read right here. Iris, please go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Isaac. It may be of further help to know that the six steps here recommended were carefully scrutinized by the late Thomas A. Edison, who placed his stamp of approval upon them as being not only the steps essential for the accumulation of money, but necessary for the attainment of any definite goal. The steps call for no hard labor. They call for no sacrifice. They do not require one to become ridiculous or credulous. To apply them calls for no great amount of education. But the successful application of these six steps does call for sufficient imagination to enable one to see and to understand that accumulation of money cannot be left to chance, good fortune, and luck. One must realize that all who have accumulated great fortunes first did a certain amount of dreaming, hoping, wishing, desiring, and planning before they acquired the money. You may as well know right here that you can never have riches in great quantities unless you can work yourself to a white heat of desire for money and actually believe you will possess it. You may as well know also that every great leader from the dawn of civilization down to the present was a dreamer. Christianity is the greatest potential power in the world today because its founder was an intense dreamer who had the vision and the imagination to see realities in their mental and spiritual form before they have been transmitted into physical form. If you do not see the great riches in your imagination, you will never see them in your bank balance. Never in the history of America has there been so great an opportunity for practical dreamers as now exists. The six-year economic collapse has reduced all men substantially to the same level. A new race is about to be run. The stakes represent huge fortunes which will be accumulated within the next 10 years. The rules of the race have changed because we now live in a changed world that definitely favors the masses. Those who had but little or no opportunity to win under the conditions existing during the Depression, when fear paralyzed growth and development. We who are in this race for riches should be encouraged to know that this changed world in which we live is demanding new ideas, new ways of doing things, new leaders, new inventions, new methods of teaching, new methods of marketing, new books, new literature, new features for all the radio, new ideas for moving pictures, Back of all this demand for new and better things. There is one quality which one must possess to win. 
and that is definiteness of purpose. The knowledge of what one wants in a burning desire to possess it. The business depression marked the death of one age and the birth of another. This changed world requires practical dreamers who can and will put their dreams into action. The practical dreamers have always been and always will be the pattern makers of civilization. We who desire to accumulate riches should remember the real leaders of the world always have been who men who harnessed and put into practical use the intangible, unseen forces of unborn opportunity and have converted those forces or impulses of thought into skyscrapers, cities, factories, airplanes, automobile, automobiles, and every form of convenience that make, makes life more pleasant. Tolerance and an open mind are practical necessities of the dreamer of today. Those who are afraid of new ideas are doomed before they start. Never has there been a more favorable to pioneers than the present. True, there is no wild and woolly west to be conquered, as in the days of the covered wagon. But there is a vast business financial, and industrial world to be remodeled and redirected along new and better lines. In planning to acquire your share of riches, let no one influence you to scorn the dreamer. To win the big stakes in this changed world, you must catch the spirit of the great pioneers of the past whose dreams have been given to civilization all that has of value. The spirit which serves as the lifeblood of our own country, your opportunity and mine to develop and market our talents. Let us not forget Columbus dreamed of an unknown world, stake his life of the existence of such world and discovered it. Copernicus, the great astronomer, dreamed of the multiplicity of worlds and revealed them. No one denounced him as impractical after he had triumphed. Instead, the world worshipped at his shrine, thus proving one more that the success requires no apologies. Failure permits no alibi. If the thing you wish to do is right and you believe in it, go ahead and do and do it. Put your dream across and never mind what they say. If you meet with temporary defeat, for they perhaps do not know what every failure brings with it, the seed of an equivalent success. Henry Ford, poor and uneducated, dreamed of a horseless carriage, went to work with what tools he possessed without waiting for opportunity to favor him. And now, evidence of his dream builds the entire earth. He has put more wheels into oper operation than any man who have ever lived because he was not afraid to back his dreams. Thomas Edison dreamed of a lamp that could be operated by electricity. Began where he stood to put his dream into action, and despite more than 10,000 failures, he stood by that dream until he made it into a, a physical reality. Practical dreamers do not quit. Willen dreamed of a chain of cigar stores transformed his dream into action, and now the United Cigar Stores occupy the best corners in America. 
Lincoln dreamed of freedom for the black slaves, put his dream into action, and barely missed leaving to see United North and South translate his dream into reality. The Wright brothers dream of a machine that would fly through the air. Now one may see evidence all over the world that they dream soundly. Marconi dreamed of a system for harnessing intangib intangible forces of the ether. Evidence that he did not dream in vain may be found in every wireless radio in the world. Moreover, Marconi's dream brought the humblest cabin and the most stately manor house by house side by side. It made the people of every nation on earth backdoor neighbors. It gave the President of the United States a medium by which he may talk to all the people of America at one time and on short notice. It may interest you interests you to know that Marconi's friend had taken into custody and examined taken had him taken into custody and examined a psychopathic hospital when he announced that he discovered a principle through which you can send messages through the air without the aid of wires or other direct physical means of communication. The dreamers of today fare better. Iris. Please take a break. Thank you for your reading. I would like to continue to read friend and partner from Brooklyn, Assistant Supervisor Zoe Sergei. Zoe, please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your read for your reading, Isaac and uh, Iris. The world has become accustomed to new discoveries. Nay, it has shown a willingness to reward the dreamer who gives the world a new idea. The greatest achievement was at first and for a time but a dream. The oak sleeps in an acorn, the bird waits in the egg, and in the highest vision of the soul, a waking angel stirs. Dreams are the seedless seedlings of reality. Awake, arise, and assert yourself, you dreamers of the world. Your star is now in ascendancy. The world depression brought the opportunity you have been waiting for. It taught people humili humility, tolerance, and open-mindedness. The world is filled with an abundance of opportunity which the dreamers of the past never knew. A burning desire to be and to do is the starting point from which the dreamer must take off. Dream, dreams are not born of indifference, laziness, or lack of ambition. The world no longer scoffs at the dreamer nor calls him impractical. If you think it does, take a trip to Tennessee and witness what a dreamer president has done in the way of harnessness, har harnessing and using the great water power of America. A score of years ago, such a dream would have seemed like madness. You have been disappointed. You have und undergone defeat during the depression. You have felt the great heart within you crushed until it bled. Take courage, for these experiences have tempered the spiritual metal of which you are made. They are assets of incomparable value. Remember, Two, that all who succeed in life get off to a bad start and pass through many heartbreaking struggles before they arrive. The turning point in the lives of those who succeed usually comes 
at the moment of some crisis, through which they are introduced to their other selves. John Bunyan wrote The Pilgrim's Progress, which is among the finest of all English literature. After he had been confined in prison and sorely punished because of his views on the object of religion, O. Henry discovered the genius which slept within his brain after he had met with great misfortune and was confined in a prison cell in Columbus, Ohio, being forced through misfortune to become acquainted with his other self and to use his imagination, he discovered himself to be a great author instead of a miserable criminal and outcast. Strange and varied are the ways of life and stranger will and stranger still are the ways of infinite intelligence through which men are sometimes forced to undergo all sorts of punishment before discovering their own brains and their own capacity to create useful ideas through imagination. Edison, the world's greatest inventor and scientist, was a tramp telegraph operator. He failed innumerable times before he was driven. Finally, to the discovery of the genius which slept within his brain. Charles Dickens began, began by pasting labels on blacking pots. The tragedy of his first love penetrated the depths of his soul and converted him into one of the world's truly great authors. The tragedy produced first David Copperfield, then a succession of other works that made this a richer and better world for all who read his books. Disappointment over love affairs generally has the effect of driving men to drink and women to ruin, and this because most people never learn the art of, art of transmuting their strong emotions into dreams of a constructive nature. Helen Keller became deaf, dumb, and blind shortly after birth. Despite her greatest misfortune, she has written her name indelibly in the pages of the history of the great. Her entire life has served an evidence that no one ever is defeated until defeat has been accepted as a reality. Robert Burns was an illiterate country led. He was cursed by poverty and grew up to be a drunkard in the bargain. The world was made better for his having lived because he closed beautiful thoughts in poetry and thereby plucked a thorn and planted a rose in its place. Booker T. Washington was born in slavery, handicapped by race and color. Because he was tolerant, had an open mind in, at all times, on all subjects, and was a dreamer, he left his impress for good on an entire race. Beethoven was deaf, Milton was blind, but their names will last as long as time endures because they dreamt, they dreamed and translated their dreams into organized thoughts. Before passing 
to the next chapter. Kindle in you, in your mind, the fire of hope, faith, courage, and tolerance. If you have these states of mind and the working knowledge of the principles described, all else that all you need will come to you when you are ready for it. Let Emerson state the thought in these words. Every proverb, every book, every byword that belongs to thee for aid and comfort shall surely come home through open and winding passages. Every friend whom not thy frantic every friend whom not thy fantastic will but the great and tender soul in thee craveth shall lock thee in his embrace there is a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it no one is ready for a thing until he believes he can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief, not merely, not mere hope or wish. Open-mindedness is essential for belief. Closed minds do not inspire faith, courage, and belief. Remember, no more effort is required to aim high in life to demand abundance and prosperity than is acquired to accept misery and poverty. A great poet has corrected, stated this universal truth through these lines. I bargained with life for a penny and life would pay no more. Forever I begged at evening when I counted my scanty store for life is a just employer he gives you what you ask but once you have set the wages why you must bear the task i worked for a manual's hire only to learn dismayed that any wage i had asked of life life would have willingly paid very thank you very much for your reading please take a break now let's stop here this part of the book and i would like to start discussion if anybody would like to share something or any comments or any questions that we could discuss it anybody i like this poem that you just read, Soye, I like it because um, it, it, it means like what you ask of life, it will give it to you. So it's very nice. Yeah, we can read it maybe if you want. Okay, let's do it. Go ahead. I bargained with life for a penny and life would pay no more. However, I begged at evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. But once you have set the wages, why, you must bear the task. I worked for a manual's hire only to learn dismayed that any wage I had asked of life, life would have willingly paid. Thank you, Zoya. Thank you, Aris. Anybody else? Yeah, I love uh, I love the uh, the uh, our today's today's pages about the um the wish, desire, and fulfillment of your desire or wish. So it means wish is a little bit smaller than desire. Desire it means uh, that um, you not only wish, wish, but you have um, more steps for realization, real, realization of your dream. 
And you see, we have to have some actions before your dreams will come, come, come true. So they suggested us like some steps. First of all, you have to know what you want. Then you have to be persistent and to turn your wish into a desire. And it's a very strong feeling to have to, to, to have desire. Do you remember that, that example with the burnt, what is it, store or something? And then everybody left. And uh, he decided to rebuild the store and it was and it had been working for many many years after so desire it's a very strong feeling absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely thank you Zoya. thank you very I much like, i like when sometimes they say about nikola tesla his favorite numbers were three six and nine mm -hmm. and they say um keep in mind that Tesla loved these numbers and his life is connected with these numbers so much. So first of all, uh, you have to know what, what you want. For example, you have a desire for something. So repeat it three times in the morning, six times in the daytime and nine times in at night. That's funny. It's interesting. As I mentioned before, they could repeat that next time I'll show you the proof from this book, my personal proof. And then again, at that time, I've got no clue about this book at all. It was 2004. Okay, thank you very much, every reader. Isaac, Zoya, Iris, and I, will, I have some kind of surprise. And uh, Zoya, tell me, what do you see on the screen? Uh, Russian text. On okay, the green please, background. please. Okay, please translate from the screen, and I will hit the play button after. Uh, a, a wonderful masterpiece of uh, watermelon sculpture made by master, master um, artist from uh, from the. From from the seeds or from the ah from the ah from the seeds and skin of the watermelon and this masterpiece strikes by its details and reality. Okay, let's watch it. Thank you for your translation. <laughs> Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, okay. One more time, okay, I will play again, right? Let's play it again. <laughs> Just wow. It's yeah. Amazing.
I hope you enjoyed this video, right? Wow, really, we enjoyed it. Beautiful. Unbelievable, just unbelievable. How can you do it? Wow. These little things, details. Oh, wow. So don't forget when you come back on YouTube channel to replay it, do not forget to click like at least once and share this YouTube channel with other friends and family. Of okay. course, if they're interested in forever business and we follow Rex's advice, if you do FLP business and you don't have fun, you're doing something wrong. So we, we do have fun too, right? Right. Okay, everybody. Don't forget to change time next Sunday. Where yeah, in the morning. A, yes, it's a, uh, next summer is coming up. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good Thank, night. You so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We were having fun. Yes, we do. Take care. Bye-bye.